There are still billions of dollars available for businesses through the Employee Retention Credit Federal Tax Credit Program. Stenson Tamadon has helped companies with less than 500 employees retrieve over $3.4 billion in tax credits through employee retention credits. Call Stenson Tamadon today at 866-934-8461 today to start your application. That's 866-934-8461 to apply. Call now. Welcome to the Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest is Kevin Must from Coljet. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Brian. Hey, before we dive into the super fun stuff, which is a dry ice gun, yep. uh, just so y'all know, <laughs> um, let's let's hear a little bit about you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and the career path that led you to where you are today with Coljet. Yeah, so uh, my name is Kevin Must. I'm the Director of America's Marketing Communication. I've been with Coljet about a year and a half now. Mm -hmm. um, my time leading up to this, I went to college at University of Cincinnati, go Bearcats, and studied communication and public relations there. Um, through college, had some internships with various bar and restaurant groups doing social media, advertising, promotions, and then uh, did a couple years as an assistant golf professional. So teaching people how to play golf. Um, did that for four years, kind of bounced around a little bit. Mm -hmm and had a buddy that was recruiting for a marketing assistant role in a, at a software company for industrial fabricators. Um, so that was when I jumped ship from the golf industry, went over to marketing, and uh, that was six years ago now. So I uh, was with that company for four years. That got me into the industrial space and then been with Coljet a year and a half now. Cool, cool. Let's, let's get into the fun topic. <laughs> what in the heck is dry ice blasting? Yeah, so uh, dry ice blasting is a cleaning and surface preparation technique. It's a very environmentally sustainable technique that can essentially take any contaminant from a surface uh, without the use of aqueous cleaners, uh, no water, no chemicals, no scrub brushes, uh, rags, any of that extra stuff that you've got to buy ends up in landfills or you have to find ways to recycle it. Mm -hmm. um, dry ice blasting is an environmentally sustainable method that doesn't use any of that. It uses dry ice, which in its, uh, in its principal form is solid CO2. And once that hits the surface, it goes right back to the CO2 gas, just leaving whatever that contaminant is on the ground to be swept up. Cool, so, so what, what happens? What happens when the dry ice hits the contaminant? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the technology behind it, uh, we use an acronym, fittingly enough, called ICE, I-C-E. So the very first one, I, stands for impact. So we take, similar to abrasive blasting techniques like sandblasting or soda blasting, um, it takes dry ice and applies supersonic air through a, an air supply hose um, and then blasts it through the hose. So you have the impact of that dry ice onto the surface is when that, that cold um, for the sea, the very cold thermodynamic shock happens. So dry ice is a negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine when that negative 109 degrees hits a you know 70 degree ambient temperature surface, that's a huge difference in temperature. So that embrittles that contaminant, puts little cracks in it essentially, and then the E stands for expansion. So at that time, when it goes from solid CO2 as dry ice to the gaseous state, it expands by about 800 times. Mm -hmm. And then that's where you see if we could shoot it in slow enough motion, we've tried. I think cameras might be getting there. Um, you could start to actually see little explosions off the surface. And then that contaminant, uh, it, it breaks the bond of that contaminant with the substrate and it falls to the ground. Wow, so, so there's, there's no chemical left behind, there's no sand left behind, there's no nothing, soda, mm -hmm. no, nothing left behind other than the contaminant. Correct. Cool. Yep. So tell me the history of this. Like, I, you know, I've been in this business a long time, and, and until recently I had never heard of this. I'm just really curious, like, where, where did it come from? Who invented it? And, and how, did it get, how did it get to where it is today? Yeah, so uh, it's actually got a pretty long history for, for it being a – relatively newer technology in the automotive space. Um, it was founded by the U.S. Navy in the mid-1940s. Mm -hmm. They were looking for a better solution for degreasing planes. Um, at the time and how they were engineering dry ice blasters, it was using a two-hose system. So 
it wasn't as effective as they were hoping, and it kind of got tossed to the wayside. Um, from 1945 on, there were a couple companies here and there that kind of picked it up to try to adapt it. Um, one of them was a large meat processing facility that was looking at how do we maybe take the meat off of the bone by blasting it with dry ice. Well, again, I think it was still maybe too early in the process. Uh, technology wasn't quite there yet. So then, you know, enter mid 1980s, mid to late 1980s. Um, one of the original founders of Coaljet decided, you know, hey, if we introduce this as a single host system, mm -hmm. would that create more velocity of the pellets coming through and giving us better results on a cleaning side? Um, so from 1986 on, that was kind of our first patent into the modern dry ice blasting single host system. Um, so from 1960 to 1986, sorry, to today. We have patented over 250 technologies in dry ice alone, from the blasting wow. side to the production side. And we continue, we're always innovating, um, always looking at new technologies and new patents to, to put out as well. Cool. Well, I, I want to ask about several industries, but let's, mm -hmm. let's start with like manufacturing, parts manufacturing, automotive manufacturing, plastic injection. Can you tell us a little bit about how, how you help in that? Yeah, so I think uh, one of our largest industries, actually, and the really neat thing with the story of blasting, dry ice blasting in particular, with automotive, is we sell into pretty much every OEM uh, through the whole process of building uh, an automobile. Mm -hmm. um, so plastic injection molding is one of our largest sectors, if not the largest for us. Um, and they, they're using it to in, in multiple areas, one being surface preparation to prepare panels for paint. Uh, to, you know, we, ha we do have automated and integrated systems that connect to robots that can be part of their paint lines to get any of that debris or dust off before it goes to paint. Um, they're also using it for deflashing methods. So when the grill comes out of the mold and it's made of plastic, it may have little burrs or flashes along any edges. So they'll hit that with dry ice to, to clean that up. Um, also on the plastic side where we see a lot of benefit is the cleaning of the actual molds themselves. Mm -hmm. Because of this process, you don't have to wait for the mold to cool off. You don't have to disassemble the mold and then take it to a clean room. And, and, you know, now that machine is down, say six hours, you can effectively shut the machine down. And while it's still hot, hit it with dry ice blasting and then fire it right back up in 15, 20, 30 minutes. So now you're not requiring six hours of downtime. You can have more throughput through your production and just less labor hours as well. Wow. So that's the that's just one side of that's it. Like we could talk all day of, of a lot of them, um, but then also like, optics as well. Let's let's talk about um, like a like a car dealer. You mentioned that car mm -hmm. dealers have started to use this product as well. Um, how how is dry ice blasting helping a car dealer recondition vehicles? Yeah, so there's been this phenomenon. We've always been industrial B2B, and in the past 18 months, we've seen detailers using it and really putting a lot of Instagram videos and YouTube videos out. So that kind of piqued the interest of auto dealers of how do we, like, what is this dry ice blasting? What, how can we use this? Mm -hmm. So um, we have a, a handful of auto dealers now that are beginning to bring these systems online, use our dry ice blasters to recondition um, Say a leased car comes in after the lease is up, they want to recondition it for sale. Instead of using your typical caustic uh, type of cleaners or any aqueous cleaners that you then have to recycle uh, that product. And I'm sure EPA may be breathing down your back a little bit of where does this water runoff go? Mm -hmm. They're looking at ways of, hey, we can do this, service the car with it and increase the value of the car. So we've seen one, one story in particular that I don't know that I shared with you earlier. We had a, a gentleman who had an Audi wagon that he, was, he had cleaned up. It was kind of a, a limited run. He was going to take it to an auction site. He was figuring I could get $10,000 out of it. Mm -hmm. Did the dry ice blasting, ended up getting 15000 out of it just mm -hmm. from doing the dry ice blasting. And because he could get it on the underside, he could really make it look almost as if it rolled off the factory floor without the need for all those additional chemicals, uh, the amount of disassembly that typically goes into it for cleaning certain areas of the car. Um, so that was just kind of one instance where we've seen it. The other side that they're looking into is 
offering it as an additional service. So when a customer or a client has their car in for service for oil change and, and whatever else, now they're looking to offer this as, hey, instead of a typical detail service, we'll do a dry ice blasting service. And it's been very well received because there's so many of these Instagram videos out there and those the enthusiasts, I think, that has seen it, they just want to be part of it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a story, a guy, one of his customers asked, can I pay, people charge a rough average, I'm sure your audience would like to know the average cost or charge is about $250 is what people are charging to dry ice blast a car. We had a customer say, one of his customers <laughs> wanted to pay the hourly rate to do it himself. Oh, because he wanted because <laughs> he, he wanted just to... wanted he wanted to pull the trigger. Yeah, because it is a really awesome technology and it, it's very neat. But I mean, that's just like, when would wow. you ever hear that a yeah. customer would be like, "I want to detail my own car." Yeah, can I pay never. you to clean my own car? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> never. You would never hear that. Yeah. So it's very interesting. I mean, there's multiple ways. We would, to make would money. get like the brake the brake residue and dust off of off wheels. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've seen that. Any uh, like oxidation on plastic, it's it's good at kind of getting that oxidation off. Um, if you get the, the minivan that comes in with their, you know, four kids stickers, three pets and all the soccer team stickers on the back, oh, yeah. I'm sure that's no fun taking all those decals off. Yeah. Um, this type of technology can effectively remove that adhesion without damaging any paint or anything like that. Um, and it's probably a, a quicker fashion for you as well, hmm. instead of using razor blades and degreasers and whatever other products are used. Yep. I actually had that job in high school, and yeah. one time my razor blade flipped around, and I had to go get uh, stitches. Oof. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, that's one that now you don't have to worry about don't potentially worry about uh, injuring your, your, your employees. <laughs> yeah. What about the, is it doing anything on the inside of the car? Yeah, so um, our, our, our one flagship machine, the, the PCS60, um, PCS stands for particle control system. It allows you to dial down the size of that dry ice pellet mm -hmm. so you can hit very delicate areas. Um, you can dial it down to about a 0.3 millimeter size, which is about the size of a sugar granular, and then all the way up to 3.0 millimeters, which is about the size of rice. That's about when you purchase it in three millimeter format. Um, so if you're looking for interiors, maybe you do the, the smaller particle size at a low pressure and take off some of the, the typical just wear and tear grime, you know, on the steering wheel, you get your, just the oils from your hand over time, it makes it dirty, mm -hmm. um, or just on your seat from sitting down. So it, it can definitely do um, some of that cleaning. Now, if it's a coffee stain, maybe not, that might yeah. be a little too rooted in it, but for surface level, yes. And what, I mean, can you use it on an engine? Can you use it on leather? I mean, like, what can't you use it on too? I mean, like. <laughs> That's we're trying to figure out what you cannot use it on. I mean, is it safe um, to spray onto the engine since there's spray, no water? Yeah, so since there's no water, um, anything electronics, sensors, optics, it's you know, we, people go from engine bay to interior to undercarriage, and it's just kind of at that point a matter of the setting. What, how aggressive do I need to be in the blasting, or how delicate do I need to be? But to your point, the engine bay is a perfect part because of all those sensors in there. You introduce moisture, now you're, they're fried. You have to replace them. So there's definitely a huge, um, it, it, we haven't come across anything that's been like uh, absolutely don't touch it with that. <laughs> hmm, um, cool. it's, it's pretty fascinating technology. You know, some of, some of our viewers uh, are in the business of building engines, rebuilding engines, built, you know, working on transmissions. Um, how, how, how does, does it, can you get into some of those areas like in, in an engine and in a transmission and how, how do you do that? Yeah. So dry ice blasting is a, uh, line of sight type of clean. And we have, I don't know the exact number of nozzles that you can put onto our applicator. Mm -hmm. I'd say at least more than 30. And each of those are engineered for specific applications. So if you need to get into an engine block, we have a, cylindrical one that when the dry ice comes down, it hits almost like a little stopper mm -hmm. that it explodes the dry ice and then shoots it out into a 360 style blast. Mm -hmm. So if you need to go into, you know, any type of cylindrical um, engine block or anything of that nature, then you could just hit it one time down and up and back. We have others that have rubber tips because we understand some of these um, 
some of the the tools that are used in these types of engineering projects or um, fabrication plants are pretty delicate as well. You don't want to knock metal against metal on some of them. Mm -hmm. So we, we've we um, looked into that as well and have rubber tipped type of solutions. But it's, yeah, again, if it, line of sight, if you can see it, it, it can clean it pretty much. Wow. Kevin, I want to take a little break here because I'm a UC graduate as, as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's 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 do a cheer. You ready? All right, let's do it. All right. Oh, 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 oh. UC. <laughs> Go Bearcats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's let's get back into uh, we'll, we'll get back into the serious part of the interview again. Um, you know, so if a if a car dealership, an engine builder, a transmission shop, I mean, if somebody wants to have this technology, they want to use dry ice blasting in, the, in, their, in their business, what do they need? I mean, do they need a, a space the size of a room? Do they need you know, the space the size of a, of a trunk? Uh, and, and what type of equipment do they need to have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. We get it every single day. What's this infrastructure set up look like? Um, so for the machine itself, our, our PCS-60 machine, the footprint's not all that big, two and a half feet by three feet, three and a half feet tall, three feet deep. Uh, on big casters, very mobile. So if they needed to go around from shop to shop, that's easy enough. We have seen, especially on the detailer side, where people have a garage of collector cars and they don't want the dust on their cars, we have seen people starting to build their own clean rooms for this blasting. It's not required, but it helps to cut down on any dust and debris that's going to find its way around the dealership. When you're introducing air at you know high pressures and dirt, it's bound to go somewhere so we're seeing people kind of make these clean rooms as well it's not necessary but depending on your setup you may want to look into it um, from there then the infrastructure and air, air requirements we're looking at we suggest a 15 horsepower compressor at minimum that can supply 50 cfm of air at 80 psi and then paired with that you'll need some sort of air treatment system that will scrub that moisture out of any of any moisture out of the air. Um, that moisture is the number one enemy of dry ice. When you introduce any water moisture to it, that's when it clumps up and then it'll clog that blast stream. So that's why it's crucial to have that air treatment before the air gets introduced into the system. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, obviously PPE, you're going to want, you know, ear protection, eye protection, gloves because it is negative 109 degrees yes. uh, i mean you can like you can bobble it and juggle it without burning yourself but we suggest not doing that um you know definitely wear gloves with it and, and use a scoop when you're feeding it into the hopper and then lastly uh, a lift to be able to get underneath the car if you need to do any undercarriage cleaning mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's that covers it and then dry ice supply as well which um you know we have a network of producers of dry ice that use our machines to make dry ice as well. That's our, our other vertical. And we can find who the, the closest supplier is and, and help anybody um, get in contact with them. Cool. Well, if, if one of our viewers wants to learn more about, uh, you know, using dry ice blasting in their business, how, how can they reach you and, 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 you know, how should they get in touch with you? Yeah, I would say um, best method, if you want to send me an email, my email address is kmust, K-M-U-S-T, at coaljet.com. Um, we have plenty of materials when it comes to brochures or a quick start guide on like what does this setup look like if you're a dealer. Um, if you're in the OEM industry, you're actually making the parts that, that make the automobiles. We have, again, we're in probably 40 different industries. So whatever industry you may fall in, we more than likely have a case study and an application video showing how this process is being used within a facility such as yours. You know, your it, own. you know, it is kind of interesting how, you know, the industries that you touch are a lot of the same industries that Babcock's Media touches. You know, we have 18 different automotive brands, and it sounds like you, it sounds like you work with all of them from our conversations, <laughs> you know? <laughs> we're, we're in a lot of industry. Yeah. Um, it's fascinating. It, it keeps my job very active because I need to know how every industry uh, operates, right? Yeah. <laughs> so one day it's uh, automotive, and then the next day it's maybe food processing or something. So it's fa it is fascinating. That or, yeah, if you go out to coaljet.com, www.coaljet.com, plenty of videos, pages, and, and stuff out there as well. Cool. Well, thank you for taking the time to be our guest today. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a great opportunity. Thank you for watching this 
Executive Spotlight. I'm your host, Brian Ankney. Today, my guest was Kevin Musk from Coljet. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope to see you again soon.